Hello and welcome back. I'd like to focus on paragraph 226.7 of the judgment in the legal case 3SA 991. In it, the judge says, In my judgment, the consistent thread of communications by the second defendant is to encourage people not to engage publicly with the claimants in relation to allegations of what did or did not transpire in relation to the ill-fated holiday in France. This is a total misrepresentation of the facts. Let's take a look at a handful of examples so you can understand what I mean. Let's start with Richie Thompson of the BHA. Mrs. Bing wrote to him in May 2012, and the judge partially quotes that email at paragraph 250 of the judgment, but he leaves out the most revealing part. It's best not to give them any attention or RT their work. I'm occasionally forced into warning others if they're being prolific as they are today. This makes it quite clear that Mrs. Bing's motivation isn't about what may or may not have happened in France, but to encourage people not to engage publicly with us in relation to our work on Steiner education. And this is far from an isolated occurrence. Here are a handful of examples. She wrote to Mike Collins, a British researcher into Steiner and Anthroposophy. It's not a good idea, in our view, to encourage Steiner parents to view their sites or get involved in any possible, but frankly unlikely, documentary. And to Alicia Hamburg, you're doing the right thing advising people not to trust them, and I'm grateful you've done so. It's really good that critics know too. She contacted Dan Duggan, owner of Plans, an American site dedicated to expose Steiner education, and said that their working methods are unethical and they are untrustworthy, and that anything else is a distraction. To Matthew Ford, a documentary filmmaker. I advise you to steer clear of Angel Garden and Steve Paris, presently of NZ, whose videos appear on the web. They're unreliable witnesses, to put it mildly. She contacted Ben Wolvin of the BBC. Ben, a researcher for this program, is now in touch with an individual called Steve Paris via Twitter, a warning that he is unreliable and that they have in no way conducted years of research. She also said, I've done my very best on Twitter, so many people to write to. I've tried to stop people tweeting their stuff, but I don't know everyone. To Moira Quatten. Angel and Steve demanded that parents came forward and spilled the beans, mostly because it would have given them material for the documentary. They really care absolutely nothing for anyone who isn't useful to them. And when Dr. Andrew Lewis warned Joe Torres about us, she told him, I've been extensively briefed on Angel and Steve via Melanie. Back in February 2012, she wrote, Just remember... There are lots of people who know about this now, and they will tell each other. But let me know the minute you see anything, because I can probably do something about it. How effective was she in using her influence to get people to spread her lies? You only need to go back to Richie Thompson of the BHA to check his response to her. DC gave me a similar warning some time ago. DC. That's renowned skeptic Dr. David Colquhoun. I could go on. But contrary to what the judge states, the consistent thread of communications is extremely clear. Humanist Mrs. Menini Bing used an incident that happened due to her own initiative that she introduced when Angel's mother was dying to launch a years-long campaign of hate against us and our work. Her goal was to get us excluded and shunned from the standard critic platform using whatever lies she could come up with that would convince people, be it bogus professions, made-up clinical judgments, invented unethical work practices, you name it, she'd use it. But in order to exonerate her, the judge had to ignore all the evidence in front of him, alter the facts, and perform the illusion of justice. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.